Hey gang, welcome to Bohol. Bohol, and in particular the Lobok River, was one of my favorite places in my Philippine itinerary. In this little video, I'll show you why Bohol should be on your bucket list. My hotel was located in Lobok, a small town on the Lobok River, not very touristy. The Lobok River offers a wild range of different cruises. I think the lunch one is very popular. Once arriving in Bohol, one of the first thing we did was to go and visit the Tasha Sanctuary. The Tasha is the smallest primate in the world. They are about 15 centimeters. The visit costs only 200 pesos. You go with a guide and you can admire that amazing little animal. Their necks are 360 degrees rotation. They are very shy and very sensitive to loud noises and physical contact. So you'd have to be fairly quiet. Apparently, they tend to get a bit suicidal when stressed. The Bohol Tashir are very lonely animals. They can have up to an acre for themselves. They only need to meet for mating. And their babies, they can climb a tree within a day of their birth. You can spot the Tashir on the 200 pesos banknote. Of course, in the Tashir Center, they are only semi-wild. Otherwise, it'll be mission impossible to find them. They're so tiny. One other animal that attracts a lot of people to Bohol is the whale shark. This is the spot where you can come and swim with them in the morning. I did not. My friend did, but it's a bit of a touristy attraction. It's quite expensive, and the whales only come because they feed them. In Bohol, we rented scooters. It is the best way, really, to explore. They are all blessed. You'll see a little virgin or a little cross on your scooter for sure. We paid 600 pesos for two days, so that's very cheap. By the way, most places in the Philippines, when renting a motorcycle, they'll try to take your passport from you, instead of a deposit, so they can be sure you come back. You do not have to do that you can always negotiate to give them a money deposit instead. Not that I don't trust them, but I never give my passport away to anybody. I got a French passport and I live in the UK, so if I was to lose it, that will be a logistical nightmare to get home. This is Incumble Waterfalls. Now, let's talk about food. We were on a budget, so we mainly ate street food, or any of those little eateries on the side of the road. The amount of single-use plastic was a little bit frustrating, to be honest. In some street foods location, because they do not have running water to wash the dishes, they'll put a plastic bag in your plate. Now, check out this delicacy. Right, especially for you, I need to try the best uh, Filipino street food. So I've got this. This is chicken intestine. Let's try. Oh. It's, actually, it's actually not bad, it's not bad, it's just the idea of it's actually okay. The chicken intestine were 5 pesos, so we're talking, I think it's about 2 cents in US dollars. You'll find a lot of little eateries on the sides of the road. Some of them are a bit surprised to see tourists coming in. They serve you those tiny little plates so you can try a bit of everything. And if you decide to be adventurous and try something you really do not like, well, that's fine. You'd probably have some little friends waiting for the leftovers. We visited very end of January, but the Christmas lights were still on. Lobok town was sadly destroyed by natural disasters several times. A earthquake, tropical storms, and in 2021, the Typhon Odette. This interesting vehicle is one of the famous jeepneys. 
originally used by the Americans, they are now used like a, like a public bus. Thanks to the Spanish, the Philippines, it's of course a very Christian country. Lobok Church is from the 18th century. It is made out of coral stone. The Jesuit priest had to move here after a Moro pirate's attack. Moro, as Muslim, they attacked the church by the seaside, so that's why they moved here. The Jesuit priest had a music school here in Lobok. That is a monument to music. A very cool thing to do in Lobok is to do a little cruise at night to go and see the light flies or the fireflies. I don't have any video footage because it's actually mission impossible to film them, but it's very cool to see. Those light flies, they live in the mangrove tree by the river and they meet at night for mating. Their light blinking is synchronized, it's quite cool. Another fun thing to do around the Lobok River is the zip line. It's literally on top of the river, it's quite impressive. It's quite different from other zip lines because you are actually laying down on your tummy, so you enjoy the view probably even more. We did not have time to do it, but a bit further north, there's also a bicycle zip line. So you are on a bicycle in the sky. That sounds quite cool as well. There are quite a few things to explore in the center of the island. That's why having a, a motorcycle is very convenient. And of course, you've got to go and take a look at the main made forest. It is beautiful, but I have to say the most crazy thing about the main made forest, it is not actually the forest. It is the fact that there's a full photo shoot happening in the middle of the road. This is mad, right? It's actually a busy road with a lot of traffic. And you've got people laying down in the middle of the street, having their photographs taken. Official photographs. I mean, they, there's a photographer there. So they actually have permission from the municipality to run that business in the middle of the street, putting people at risk. It's mad. Another thing that's quite interesting in the Philippines, it is the cemeteries. From the distance, they often look like a little village. Well, I guess it is a village, a village for the dead. So straight ahead, behind this rice uh, plantation, at the foot of the little mound, this is a cemetery. And of course, one of the most famous touristic attractions in Bohol, it is the Chocolate Hills. Bohol is home to over a thousand of those tiny little hills. It would cost you 200 pesos to go into a little minivan, so they take you up and then you climb up one of them to enjoy the view. They are so-called chocolate because in the dry season, the green grass goes all brown. Apart from the green or brown grass, you do not have much vegetation growing on them. If you do have a scooter, there's also a secret little way where you can go and literally walk or climb one of them. They have been created by Mother Nature, tectonic plus erosion. It is known as conical karst topography. But of course, they are so unusual that they led to quite a few legends. One legend is that there were once two giants, one from the north, one from the south. They engaged in a giant mud fight. Both of the giants died. What was left of the mud fight became the hills. 
another version of the legend said there was one giant, Ahogo, and he was in love with a human lady called Aloya. They had a brief love story, but sadly, Aloya died. Ahogo the giant was so sad that he cried those massive tears. And those tears created this beautiful landscape. The last version of the legend said it was giant kids. They were playing. They were actually baking cakes. A mud cake contest. When their mother called them back home for dinner, so they left it as it was. They would have become the hills. Not far from the hills, you've got an amazing waterfall. But the road, well, it's not a road, it's clay. So on a wet day, on a motorcycle, it can be very dangerous. Even on foot, it was very slippery. They seem to be walking on a road, though. So you might have a lovely road by the time you visit. The Lobok River is clean, by the way. You can swim in it. We did. You can also rent a paddle to go and see the light flies. To leave Lobok, we took a jeepney, then a bus. The bus had five seats in a row instead of the usual four. We went a bit further east of Bohol to Jagna because we were going to the ferry terminal there. They have a great food market in Jagna. We have a lot of fruits, vegetables, fish, meat, street food as well. And of course, everything is also available in tiny little packages. Even if you need cooking oils, no need to buy a big bottle, you've got those little bags here of oil. Some people in the Philippines, sadly, really do not have a lot of money, so they buy on a day-to-day basis. So you can find pretty much anything in tiny little quantity, like this black pepper here. Around the market, on the port, make sure you do not smoke. Well, anywhere in the Philippines, if you happen to be a smoker, you should only smoke in the designated smoking areas. By the market, they have inspectors that would come and give you a fine. My friend got one. Leaving Bohol, we jumped on a ferry towards coming in, a volcanic island. I'll be doing a little video there as well. The ferry looked a bit old, but it was actually my favorite ferry ride in the Philippines. It was very comfortable. You had a lot of little beds. You could also stay outside with the fresh air on the front deck if you wanted to. It is blessed, of course, like any transport in the Philippines. All the ferries we took in the Philippines were very different companies on very different boats. This one was great. And major little bonus. Through our way, on the front deck, we spotted dolphins. I hope you enjoyed that little video of Bohol. If you happen to have visited yourself, or if you are a local, if you have any suggestions or any travel tips for anyone planning a trip to Bohol, of course, feel free to pop them in the comments. And if you'd like to see a bit more of me, do check out my live section. Most of what I do on YouTube is live streaming.